Right, we're back with another video and today we are going to be doing the Fit 500, the White Lounge and this is pretty much nearly there. I think we are nearly and we're just doing some sort of little tidy ups. So this is all going to be nothing too strenuous, nothing too mechanical or anything like that it's small little things that actually to be fair a lot of fiat 500s have uh, problems with so without further ado um, let's crack on with the video and the like and subscribe button down below um, be really handy if you could just um, hit those so we can get our numbers up a bit more because they're slowly going up and um, it'll be nice to get some more. So yeah, uh, on with the video. So one of the things that's broken, which I guess some people don't necessarily check, is the fuel cap for the car it's uh i'll show you actually maybe it's best i'll show you first hold on it's not locking and you just literally can't can't do anything with it at all so needed to get a new one but because let's just shut that um, because it's got this lock on it it means that if you get well yeah if you buy a replacement um, your key doesn't basically lock it now, having sort of looked at it, it's not exactly the easiest thing to get out, and I don't really think. So luckily, I went on eBay, and we found this one, which is a, it's just a normal, let's just say it's a lock-in, it's a manual lock, it doesn't, you know, need a key. So we'll use that. I mean, no one really siphons fuel anymore, not unless you're a HGV driver. So I think that's just going to be a good a good replacement. I can't remember how much it was now. So it maybe just a fiver, something like that, five, six pounds. It's another Fiat 500 one. It just doesn't have a lock. So all these little things, unfortunately, add up. Um, and I've never had a fuel cap problem before, so... It's always a first for everything, but there you go. We'll uh, we'll we'll put that on, and that's one little less thing to sort out. This is the second time that I've done the seats on the car because the first time oh, they were just so bad. Normally, I find with the lounge seats they need to go over twice, so I've done those again. Same process before with the bizzle. Um, wet vac and you can see even second time around i'm amazed by the sludge that came out of those seats and i thought they weren't too bad the first time so um yeah um but they're a lot better now and uh, unfortunately it's just going to take forever to uh, dry so on to the alloy wheels they were the fronts were really bad really scuffed hit numerous curbs and I thought maybe what I'll tend to do is I could send them into the body shop, but it's, it's just scuffing really, and I can sort that out myself. No need to pay whatever it is, fifty, sixty pound a uh, wheel. So decided that as they weren't too bad, it was a case of uh, sanding down. The rough edges and then applying 
very roughly the um, uh, putty to the alloy allowing that to dry as you can see here luckily it's in a sort of a aluminium color as well so that's quite good but ignore the fact that it's really rough because in a minute I'm gonna sand that back and get that to a nice uh, smooth uh, finish on the alloy so we have sanded that back and this is the first um, paint job as well on the wheel so generally they've come out pretty well and I'm generally pretty happy with them uh, I've not applied the lacquer uh, but you'll see in the next in the next one the lacquer is on and they're pretty much all done and can go back on the car and that's cost me Mm, I think it's the cost of the paint can which was I think about £7.50 per can or something like that um, didn't need to do the whole wheel luckily it was a fantastic colour match and yeah just a very cheap and easy way of fi fixing the uh, bad alloys so to get the vent out you need to invest in some of these radio removal tools for Fiat. You remove these little plastic covers. Don't lose them. They're an absolute pain to find. Then you put in the removal tool into the holes. You'll hear it click and then effectively it locks them in position and then you can then effectively pull out the radio like so then we've then got some Phillips head screwdrivers one there and one there and then this is kind of clipped in at the top so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to effectively with a bit of pulling just pull and this will hopefully unclip itself so you, it's yeah worked on the basis of clips and two phillips head screwdrivers uh, screwdrivers two phillips head screws and then hopefully this will come out very very shortly right so it's out and you can see what we've got is got a crack down there which was always there that was not me and then we somehow need to reconnect these that top that top slat that will just reconnect back in there okay but we need to reconnect these back up to within here somewhere or somehow so i think there'll be a bit of fiddling working out how we're going to do that Hopefully, it's a nice, relatively simple job to do. Okay, so we remove the plate, this plate here, and we've readjusted these so that now you can't really see it, but now basically they work, and that side as well, and these are all in place. So then all we've got to do is drop this, drop this down and you need to effectively clip the vent back into there and then uh, screw it in. So, uh, I just need pushing in and fingers crossed that's all done and there we go it's all in it's all as far as I'm aware it's all in it's not creaking and it's not attempting to um, come out so I think we're all good we're all good on that one 
so I think pretty much there on the interior um, oh yeah we need to sort out this as well and get a bulb in into here as well so but I've done that a few times I think on videos so I won't bore you with that I'll just I'll just go and do that um, off camera I think